In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use this really fun loop yarn to knit a project. And I'm going to show you how to both knit and purl using this yarn. My name is Patty, and I would like to welcome you to the channel. I go by Patty Mac Makes everywhere online. And this is my YouTube channel and I do all sorts of fun crafty things uh, including some baking and cooking so be sure to like today's video hit the subscribe bell hit for all the notifications you know just all the things okay let's take a look at this yarn so this is super popular right now and you can see like they're showing a little baby's blanket here and um, it's super soft. Uh, the fiber content on this yarn is all polyester. So if uh, vegan is important to you, this, this is a good choice. It's also going to launder really well, which is very important uh, with baby stuff. We've got to be able to throw this in the washing machine and not worry about it. I got this on sale, so uh, you might check where you are and see if they also have it on sale. So let's just look at the yarn first. And uh, what they've done basically is they have this, um, your straight piece, and then you've just got all these little loops coming off. And they, they can be a little challenging to get them all going in the right way. You want everything kind of going the same way, but you can see that there's just this straight piece like any other kind of yarn would be, uh, but then the little loops. And they're connected here in between. So let me show you this. So what you can do is come in between the loop and then you snip and then that releases the loop and the reason that you're going to want to do this is so that you have a tail to weave in because you're still going to have to do something with your ends unless you just want to leave ends floating free which you can certainly do that um, if you're going to, going to want to weave in ends you're going to want to nip these little loops and then see it looks just like your regular yarn. So it's uh, as is true of all of these knitting projects. It's a little bit uh, on the fiddly side until you can get it going. So your first step is to kind of get everything going the same way. Lay it out in front of you and what I recommend to you is that you work on a tabletop so that everything is laying right here in front of you and this is going to be what we call our cast on edge and you're going to actually be doing your work on this side the first thing we're going to do is count our cast on so let's say that we want to do uh, something that is 10 stitches across. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there's the width of our project. Here is our yarn tail. And what we're going to do is kind of make sure that this yarn is behind the project. So we said 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10. Okay, so the, since this project is for 10 loops, the 11th loop, we're going to come behind the project and we're just going to take that loop and pull it through. And there's your first stitch. So I find that it's easier if you kind of bring the yarn over the way that you want to go. And then we're going to go to the next loop and we're going to pull it through and so on. And I hope you can see this. Okay. 
this is literally it and as I said it's always more fiddly on those first stitches than once you get it going let me fold my sleeves back and then maybe you can see a little better okay so we're taking the loop this is the working yarn we're taking that loop and we're just putting it through the row that we're working on which is the one that is closest to us and pull it through this is really what you're doing you're just taking the loop from the working yarn and you're gonna pull it through on the row that's closest to you and this is giving us um, essentially uh, knit stitches so there we go and just pull them up and uh, let's I'm gonna going to go ahead and knit back and as you can see with this type of knitting you don't ever have to flip your project over you're always working on the right side of your project okay so we're going to go back this way so just kind of position your yarn so that it's going the right way and this is truly it you're just pulling those loops through from the back to the front just pull them up so you can see what you're doing Okay, and we're at the end of that row. And just kind of go and pull up on your loops. This is just to make it easier for you to see your work. That's all. Just want to be able to see what we're doing. And you can see it's already giving us those little V's like we have in any other knitting project. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, go ahead and knit a few rows and then I'm going to come back and show you what we've got and then we'll talk about it a little bit more. That gives us just a little bit more of the fabric so you can really see what's going on. And as I knit back this way, I'm going to talk to you about what I like about loop yarn. What I like about the loop yarn is that it is uniform sized stitches because the little loop is already made for you and that's going to be the size of your stitch. I see people doing uh, where they're knitting on a table without using needles and just pulling yarn through and you're going to have a really hard time getting nice even stitches if you do that. Also with that type of thing when you have live stitches that are just hanging out there and these are what we would call the live stitches it's very easy for those to get pulled out or dropped or have something happen and um, you know you can go back and fix things but if you're a beginner and I would assume that if you are trying to knit without using needles you would be a beginner uh, so it's really easy to mess up your work and that's no fun at all Also, if you're doing like the arm knitting, uh, you know, your arm is not the same um, width all the way up and down. So again, you're going to have trouble uh, keeping your stitches even and uh, you can't put your work down because it's on your arms. <laughs> so if you, you know, need a cup of tea or you have to answer the door, or you have to go to the bathroom, heaven forbid, um, what do you do with your knitting? Okay, so these are all of our knit stitches and you know the, wor the working yarn has been behind the project. 
So I promised you in the beginning I would show you how to both knit and purl. So now we're going to purl and what we're going to do is bring the working yarn to the front and then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to pull the loops through just like we've been doing only we're doing it on the front side of the work. In uh, knitting when we make a knit stitch we have the working yarn in the back and when we make a purl stitch we have the working yarn in the front and you can see we're doing exactly the same thing here and what a purl stitch is going to do is give you a little more texture so and basically a purl is the opposite of a knit. They're the same stitch, they're just uh, two sides of one coin, let's put it that way. So let's just pull our little loops up so we're even and look at the difference. See how these are kind of smooth and then this is creating a texture. That's your purl stitch. So let's, um, let's go ahead and purl back and you can see that. And again, just lay your working yarn, which is this. Working yarn is the yarn that's attached to the ball of yarn. So have your working yarn on the front of your work. You can just lay it right on top of your project, no problem. And there's the end, and we're just going to stick our loop through. It's, it's really, um, it is relaxing, but uh, definitely, <laughs> I think you need to do it on a tabletop. If you're trying to do this in your lap, I don't know how that's going to work out. I would not recommend trying to um, sit on the couch and watch TV and do it. Um, although, you know, maybe that works for you. For me, I think it would be uh, just too darn easy to mess something up. Um, and especially like I see this used a lot for blankets. So using it with a blanket, you know, it's a lot wider than this. So I think it would be super hard to um, keep everything straight. The thing with this <laughs> loop yarn is it's extremely fuzzy. Um, they call it a boucle, which is loops. And I mean, it's, it's really fuzzy. It's, this is what I think of it as. I think of it as kind of like um, knitting with a Muppet, <laughs> if you know what a Muppet is. I feel like I'm uh, making a Muppet when I work with this yarn. Okay, and all I'm doing is straightening my stitches and look at that. So we have all of these rows of knit and now we have two ro rows of purl. Now we wanna go back to knitting, take your yarn and you put it behind the project and that's all the difference is. And now I'm pulling the yarn through from behind and then it will go back to a knit. And that's, uh, that's everything. That's how you do it. it. It takes a little practice to be able to identify the right loops. Um, so that's a thing. You're gonna wanna be patient with yourself there um, but really this is it. You're just going to pull everything through. So, um, yeah, if you have questions, drop them below. I will do my best to answer them and stick around because we're going to take this beautiful pattern from Bernat. Uh, Burnett is a yarn company and they make loop yarn uh, and it's pretty easy to find. I think most any craft store is going to have it. And what we'll do is uh, when I get that video ready for you, I'll link to the pattern. You can print out your own copy of the pattern and uh, make your own loop yarn scarf. And I'll show you how to read the pattern so that you can understand that and how to do your own knitted uh, scarf. You, you can do the blanket, but, um, you know, it's just, it takes a while. That's the thing. 
So see, it can be a little tricky to find your loop sometimes, which is why I think having it on the table where at the end of each row, you can kind of go through and uh, stitch by stitch, make sure that you have everything there. Let's see if we have all our stitches. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So they're all there. Doesn't quite look like it, but they're all there. And then we're back to knitting. Okay, that that is how you knit and purl with loop yarn. And uh, make sure that you're subscribed and you have that bell notification checked so that you don't miss out on the scarf project. I'll show you how to read the pattern because I know people a lot of times will have questions on that. That can be confusing and uh, it's not it's not just you. Reading and understanding a knitting pattern can be a little bit of a challenge. So, okay, that is our swatch for knitting in loop yarn and uh, that's what I have for you today. I hope that you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.